So it's always interesting to me and uh, something I get asked a lot is how to just make quick and easy content inside a touch designer. Because I think, like I was mentioning, a lot of times we overcomplicate what we're doing inside a touch designer and we almost ignore a lot of the pre-built tools that are in here. And for example, if you have seen the intro screen for our live streams, you know, it's got some lava lamp effect I was mentioning. That's only one node. And I think this is a really good example of how simply you could make some really easy content that's good for backgrounds or even if it could even be a foreground, you know, for like if it's a lower budget event that you're working on and you kind of just need to throw something up really quick and you don't want to throw up like a Beeple content just because everyone's going to know it's like a Beeple content. These are some of the strategies I use for that kind of thing. So the first one that I always love, this trick I use all the time, uh, noise top is so flexible. So when you start with noise top, you see this and immediately your mind doesn't go towards cool generative graphics because you're just like, that looks like a pattern and then you start jiggling stuff and it just gets crazier or less crazy. But lava lamp effect with a noise top is bang for buck, probably one of the best tricks in touch designer. So the first thing I would do is I turn up the period because when you turn down the period, you basically get static and you can almost think of period as zooming you in to the noise. So I just zoom it in until I feel like, you know what, that's enough stuff happening on the screen. Like I don't want it to be too busy. I kind of want more of just that kind of lugubrious blob vibe that's moving around. So first step is you're turning up the period. Most of the time I'm going to turn monochrome off because I want to have some colors. Colors are good. Then the next thing I do before getting too into like parameter diving, which is something you can do endlessly in Touch Designer, is I go to the transform page and I want to give it some form of animation to make it move. And the cool thing is you can use all of these different kinds of animations and get different effects. So for example, if I was to move on the x-axis, you can see it kind of does this like infinite scroll effect. Same with Y. Z is actually cool because if you infinitely scroll, it feels like you're kind of moving through this liquid texture. And it gives it like a really nice, I find lava lamp kind of vibe. You can use rotations as well. Rotations and noise are not the same as rotations and texture. So it's not actually just like rotating the picture. It's rotating through the noise. So you can see as I'm rotating X, kind of almost similar to the Z translation, but a little bit different and very similar for a lot of these. They just all have kind of like their own different aesthetic and look to them. So I'm gonna zero these out really quick. And what I usually do, which is I find the quickest, is I drop down on the translate, I go to TZ, and I just do abs time dot seconds, oh, dot seconds, and then you get this. Now this is a little bit extra. This is obviously like crazy. And I find if you had a client that would pay for this, you could probably get them to pay for anything at that point. But I wanna slow this down. And what's cool about using Python expressions, especially when we're using abstime.seconds, is that it's really easy just to do a little bit of math to slow it down. So if you multiply a number by another number less than zero, especially in this case, like we have abstime.seconds, which is this counter that's always growing. What we can do is by multiplying it by a number less than zero, we're essentially taking the angle that it's growing at and flattening it out a bit so that it's essentially growing at a slower rate. So for example, if I multiply this by 0 0.9, probably not gonna notice much of a difference, but I'll keep stepping down and we'll see as I go to 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, we're starting to notice the slowdown, 0 0.5. And a cool thing you can do is even watch the final result here. And you'll see that the final result just keeps getting smaller. And as Rajat's saying, yes, less than one. So like you see 0 0.4, we're starting to get smaller. Now it jumps to 700, 0 0.3. And you know, I'll just go ahead and jump down to 0 0.1. And we can see now that we're multiplying this by 0 0.1, you can see how slow the seconds are ticking by. Because it's kind of like what I was saying there. Like normally your abs time dot seconds is this continuous seconds counter. And by multiplying it by a number less than one, you're essentially taking this rate of growth and just like flatlining it more and more. And already you've got something that looks really pretty, you know, even with its default parameters, all we did was turn up the period. We kind of got these nice pastel colors going around. Would be great. Personally, I'd probably go in here and maybe start tweaking stuff, maybe turn down some of the offset. 
turn up the amplitude just so it's a bit stronger in the colors. You know, you can do stuff like turn down harmonic gain so it's, it's more blended or turn it up so you get more hot spots. It's so easy to just come in here, drop a noise top, and you have this beautiful background. Now, a common mistake I always see folks do when they're doing things like this, generating noise and complex patterns, is they think to themselves, okay, well, I've got this 256 by 256. I need this to be 1080. So they go to the common page. They say 1920 by 1080. And they start wondering why their system's running so slow. And that's because as you kind of turn up the resolution on these, you can see this one now is taking almost 2 milliseconds of GPU cook time, which is quite a lot, especially if you're trying to run at 60 FPS. So usually what I do is I just keep it pretty small. I keep it 512 by 512 maybe even. You can see now it's it's hovering around 0.2, so almost an order of magnitude faster. And then it's really easy to use something like uh, Resolution Top. You know, we go to the Resolution Top, we turn this up to say Custom Resolution, and then we set this to 1920 by 1080. One trick you have to remember is by default, the aspect ratio is gonna use the input and that creates these weird situations where you can see I have a resolution of 1920 by 1080, but I have an aspect ratio of one to one, which is like not, I didn't think it was scientifically possible, but in fact is possible. So I always turn this to resolution. That way it's going to calculate the aspect ratio based on whatever custom resolution I give it. And now you can see simply like that, I have this nice 1920 by 1080 kind of moving lava lamp kind of texture takes way less processing power because this takes 0 0.07 milliseconds GPU time. This is 0.2. So even the two of these together is far less than if I just cranked up my noise top. So that's like one way that I think is really cool. And just to kind of show a few other highlights from the palette that I really enjoy. Uh, let me open up the palette browser here. And what I'll do is I actually downloaded a quick Beeple clip I'll drag that into my project because, listen, at the end of the day, not every project has the budget to go make custom content or make these crazy generative scenes. Sometimes you're just trying to do the best you can on a shoestring budget. And Beeple clips have always been great for that. But over time, I mean, people are starting to be aware of like, well, that's a Beeple clip and this one looks like a Beeple clip. So finding ways to still harness a lot of the value in the content, like the colors, the pattern, the motion, but then making it less, you know, Beeple on the surface. And I think there's a couple interesting tools in the palette. If you go to image filters, there's a lot of really cool effects in here. Some of the ones that I like most are feedback edge. So if I drag and drop this in and I plug this Beeple clip in, you can see we're not exactly erasing Beeple's work here, but we're kind of just changing it enough where it gives a little bit of fresh life, right? So for example, now we've kind of made this dreamier kind of like feedback version of this clip and we can even turn it up more and more. Let's turn up, uh, let's say the scale a little bit more, more blur. And you could totally take this to town and really just change it in so many different ways till it's almost unrecognizable. Now in this case, feedback edges works a lot but sometimes can be a bit much. So another one that I like using a lot is this pixelate. If you ever wanted to just make a really quick pixelated effect, super easy to do here. We plug it in and we just start turning up the pixel sizes. Normally I'll stick with square pixels, but it's really easy just to crank this up and all of a sudden you have this cool 8-bit background. It's still using a lot of the complex movement and colors from that Beeple source but it's not obviously like, oh, look here, we're just playing Beeple clips. Thanks for hiring us. Two other ones that I really like, one is Pointalize, which is kind of like Pixelate, but it works with circles, I guess is a good thing to do. And what you'll notice with some of these effects when you plug them in, your system performance is immediately going to tank. So I would say for a lot of these effects, unless you're working on a really beefy system, a good practice to do is actually plug your source into a resolution. Because then what you can do is, is I turn on the high quality resize, I set this to about half resolution, and then I'll pass it in. And now I'm holding a much better frame rate on my laptop, still dipping under 30 just because I have all this other stuff running. But you can already see it's doing this really cool circle 
you know, pixelation where it's just drawing circles that are colored on top of all the content. They kind of look like particles, but they aren't particles. And you can do fun stuff with it. For example, you can turn up the size points. All the way that you know, like, okay. Oh boy, did I crank it up too high? Crank it up too high. I cranked it up too high. Now we should now we should be back live again. Uh, but you know, for example, if I did it to thirty, you know, if you got a situation going on, if I turn this back down to maybe ten, and then instead I can turn up the point scattering so they're kind of more farther away from their origin point. You can get totally really nice abstract graphics. I mean, this looks like it's it's something that was made custom, but really it's just a Beeple clip feeding through some effects. So these type of things can go a really long way. And then similarly, the last one, which is pretty similar in terms of resource usage, is Pixel Relocator. And this one's a really cool one because it essentially takes your image, puts it on a grid of particles, and then allows you to do interesting stuff where you can kind of like morph them around change the weight, kind of like deform that mesh in a sense. And it's really cool when you plug in a, a video to it. So for example, I'm even going to drop this down to quarter res just to save my system here. But you can see it creates this really cool mesh effect. And then you can even take things like um, LFOs and put them onto the weights so that you start kind of doing this real time morphing of the particles while they're kind of doing their colorization based on the movies. So hopefully this is useful. I use these techniques pretty regularly, especially like if I'm just making test content or if it's just a small gig I'm helping a friend with or maybe something that doesn't have a lot of budget for me to make a ton of content. I can pull a lot of stock footage, pull a lot of Beeple stuff for nice colors and patterns, and then kind of load those into an interesting kind of composition with all these effects. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.